Hello again. Here we come with some new information from our trussing and rigging TV channel A4i.tv. I've often been asked whether a square truss can also be hung in a rotated position or, like some people say, in a diamond-shaped position. If this was allowed, I could just answer with a simple yes or no. But that would be too easy, wouldn't it? And there would be no point in making this video, right? So if you want to know the answer, you'll have to watch it to the end. Of course, rotating the truss by 45 degree makes it very user-friendly. On the single upper main cord, you can use a coupler with a ring eye or a choked round sling to hang the truss. That's nice and simple. With the truss hanging in this way, for example, lighting fixtures could be mounted in a straight line along the lower cord. To answer the question whether this is allowed or not, we have to see what happens inside the individual components of the truss, that means the main cords and the braces. This truss is designed as a framework whereby only compressive and tensile forces occur in the main cords and diagonals when it's hung horizontally. If, however, a square truss with four main cords is hung and rotated by 45 degrees, this is no longer guaranteed. In case of the normally suspended truss, the loads are supposed to be equally divided on the main cords and to act vertically. In other words, the load direction corresponds to the orientation of the sides of the square. Therefore, the, the cross section remains square when I pull on it. If, however, it hangs at an angle, the cross section tends to deform from a square to a parallelogram. The 90 degree angle in the upper and lower corners wants to shrink, while the angle in the corners on the sides wants to expand. However, as you can see with the foam, changing this angle is associated with bending of the bars. Bending the thin diagonals and end frames of a truss, here it's quite thick, but in reality it is more thin. However, this generates significantly higher stress than the actual force occurring with the correct orientation of the truss. To illustrate this, I've prepared a calculation for a 9 meter span made of a usual roughly 30 centimeter large truss. This calculation uses the maximum allowed uniformly distributed load that's listed as 110 kg per meter in a corresponding load chart. Let's first look at the stress experienced in the braces of regular hung truss. The upside down pyramids with balls symbolize the supports like a ceiling bracket, for example. This model calculates 4.73 kN per square centimeter of stress in the braces from this maximum allowed load. Compared with the limit of bearable stress for the aluminium alloy 6082T6, this 4.73 kN per square centimeter corresponds with a roughly 40% utilization. That means the load is not limited by the stress these braces can take, but by the stress that occurs in the main tubes in the center of the span. When rotated by 45 degrees, the stress increases from 4.73 to 25.58, which corresponds with a 216% utilization of its acceptable stress. This definitely causes the truss to fail. Some people might now say, okay, let's keep it simple and easy. When I load the truss with, let's say, only 40% of the maximum allowed load, then it will work. But with life and the reality we live in, it's not always that easy. Unfortunately, I have to say that there's no simple rule of thumb for how much the acceptable loaded load decreases because the maximum allowed payload in a 45 degree rotated configuration depends on many parameters. The load type, which means if it's a distributed load, a center point load or several point loads. 
has a significant influence as does the span and the truss type. If you still want to use rotated truss, you should contact us or any structural engineer who is familiar with trusses and the event industry for a proper calculation. See you soon. Bye bye.